My name is Teresa Van Hatten Grenath, and I am an associate professor at Belmont University here in Nashville, Tennessee. And I am a mother, and I am a wife, and I am also the green bag lady. And what is that, you ask? That's what I ask. <laughs> um, okay, well, Green Bag Lady is an eco friendly art project that started in 2008, and we make bags out of donated, recycled, or upcycled fabric, and we give them away for free in exchange for a promise to use them instead of paper or plastic. And we have given away over 16,000 bags all over the world. In 2008, my husband came home with a couple fistfuls of plastic bags from the grocery store. And I said, why didn't you use the fabric bags in the car? And he said, well, all the bags were in the other car. It just drove me crazy how much us Americans waste. And we don't even think about it. One reason that I'm targeting bags is that I think it is such an easy way for us to reuse something. If you're walking into the grocery store, you have another choice. You can use reusable bags. So I started to think about it and I thought, well, I have a sewing machine and I have lots of fabric and I can probably make some bags. So I started giving them away to family and friends. And I went into one of my classes and all the students said, oh, this is fabulous. Yes, we want a bag and you need to blog about this. This is amazing. You need to record all the names and the numbers and who gets them and things like that. And I thought, there's no way I'm gonna have a blog. I'm not a blogger. So they actually set up the blog for me and called me Green Bag Lady. <laughs> and so from that point on, greenbaglady.org was born. I blog there on a daily basis. Um, just keep people informed of kind of green initiatives and also anything interesting that I come across that has to do with bags. And there's a section on there called Global Bag Locations and you can click on it and you can see where they are. So it goes from A to Zimbabwe. One Tennessee artist is taking her efforts to save the earth a step further. NBC came and taped the first event that I ever did where I sat at a sewing machine and made bags and then gave them away to people. And um, little did I know that that would be broadcast nationwide and in Canada. And so I started getting daily requests for bags. Some, anywhere between 50 and 100 people would email me per day. And so it was a little bit crazy, but what happened because of that is I had a bunch of women come out of the woodwork and say, hey, we'd really like to help you with this project. We started basically a Green Bag Lady group and of volunteers. And so actually, after three years, we still meet every Sunday for a couple hours. We make somewhere between 100 and 150 bags per week. And um, like I said, we've given away over 16,000 all over the world. So I guess each year we make 5,000 something bags. To so my father is a huge proponent of the project. When I first told him what I was doing, he got so excited and he said, this is great, I love it, I love it. And since he is a retired electrical engineer, he said, well, how about I help? How about I help with the website and how about I help with the mailing? And he single-handedly foots the bill for all of the postage and the mailing, which is fantastic. I think when it comes right down to it, I have to attribute it all back to my mother. And actually the project is dedicated to her. And she was an avid, recycler, reuser, upcycler, you know, upcycling wasn't really a term back when she was younger, but she would save um, toilet paper tubes, cardboard scraps and things like that and just encourage her grandchildren to make sculptures out of it. So they would take that in a roll of masking tape and make these enormous, gorgeous, beautiful sculptures. And so she really encouraged that in my life and in the lives of her grandchildren. And so I think watching that and seeing how much she reused things, that was a good inspiration for me for this entire project. We try to keep the project as waste-free as we possibly can. And one of the ways that we do that is we stuff all of our scraps into essentially big pillows and it becomes a pet bed. We call them Scrappy Nappy. And we take those and we donate them to the Humane Society, animal hospitals, rescue shelters. So actually all of our fabric for the project is donated. I'll get an email that says, my grandmother passed away and there's a big box of fabric in the attic and I would love to donate it to your project. And so we say fantastic. And I just really love the idea that I'm getting this box of fabric that was once loved by somebody. We can take that box of fabric and turn it into something useful that's going out into the world and then being used on a daily basis by other people. And I just, I think that's just a wonderful use of all of this stuff that maybe somebody might end up throwing away otherwise. <laughs>